Hi, I'm Joe, and this is an introduction to Internet Protocol version 6. First, a little background on the Internet Protocol. The Internet Protocol is the primary protocol in the Internet layer, which is layer 3 of the OSI networking model. This job basically is to deliver packets from a source to the destination. And this job is mainly performed by routers. As of May 2015, this month, about 97% of web traffic is still using IP version 4. So only about 3% of web traffic currently uses IP version 6. Uh, the IP version 5 is never become, going into mainstream usage, so that's kind of skipped over. Um, but the transition to IP version 6 has been a very long, slow, gradual one because the, the standard was launched in 1999 but is intended to eventually replace IP version 4. Now, why switch to IP version 6? Well, IP version 4 was developed a number of years ago, in the 1980s, when the Internet was still very, very young. There was just no way to foresee the number of addresses that would be needed. They didn't predict at that time that so many different devices would be connected to the Internet. So many people would be using the Internet, and it would be growing into something as big as it is. Now, IP version 6, developed in the 90s, actually provides far, far more address space than IP version 4 does. So IP version 4 is limited to only 4.3 billion addresses, which is fewer than there are people in the world. Uh, but if you look at the number of devices that are already existing in the world, automobiles, smartphones, websites, televisions, security cameras, all these things, including thermostats for your house, all these things are going to be eventually connected to the web, or already are, plus servers, um, basically e even your watch maybe someday. Uh, so any electronic device may eventually be connected to the Internet. So the IP addressing system needs to be able to accommodate that many devices, a vast number of devices, which IP version 6 does. So the address itself is... IP version 6 uses eight blocks of four hexadecimal digits. Leading zeros can be omitted. And if there are, is a block that is all zeros, it can be replaced just by a, a double colon. IP version 6 was, uh, was launched in 1999. The biggest difference is the amount of address space. IPv4 only supports 32-bit addressing, which is 4.3 billion addresses, but IP version 6 supports 128-bit addressing, which is a really, really huge number. Um, each additional one bit of address space, so as you, as you jump from 32 bits to 33 bits, the number of address spaces supported doubles. So that's the 2 to the 33 power would be uh, 8.6 billion addresses and so on. So 2 to the 128th power is a really big number. Basically provides a lot of addresses that, that the world will never run out of. Address exhaustion was the main reason for switching. So there were a lot of reasons that caused that. Rapid growth in the number of internet users. Fast growth in mobile devices that was unexpected a decade ago. Always on devices. And poor allocation of, of the addresses that we had. They came up with a lot of new technologies for the Internet Protocol, basically to slow down the usage of addresses. And uh, network address translation was probably one of the big ones. Subnetting, uh, network address translation, where you could, you could have internally a private network that uh, connected to the, the Internet through just one IP address. Um, and DHCP. So these things all help slow down the, the consumption of addresses. But still, the transition to IP version 6 is inevitable. So more address space. IP version 6 provides about 5 times 10 to the 28th addresses for each of the 7 billion people on the planet. So that's a lot of addresses. And that's the biggest advantage of IP version 6, is just the vast number of address space that it offers. Um, so let's look at the packet header. This is some of the technical changes to IP version 6 to make it more efficient. Um, the router's job is basically to forward a packet to the next router that is closer to that's the destination. Okay, so it looks at the IP address, the, the destination IP address, and it says, "Where's the next router to forward this to reach that destination?" So 
they wanted to make these packet headers more streamlined and more efficient for the routers to process so they could speed the routing time. So they stripped out uh, rarely used or optional fields from the header uh, or moved them into different areas, into different locations. Uh, and I'm going to go through this packet header in detail in a second here. The packet header for IP version 6 is fixed at 40 bytes. This is important. IP version 4 had a variable length packet header because optional fields may or may not be included, which would change the length of the, of the header. With IP version 6, is a fixed length at 40 bytes, and optional fields are tacked into the payload. So they did not affect the length of the fixed header. Keep in mind, though, 32 of those 40 bytes are source and destination addresses, so there's not a lot of extra data in the packet header. It's pretty lean and mean. Um, now let's look at field by field. We're going to look through uh, the packet headers, IP version 4 versus IP version 6. And on the top, IPv4, I, I uh, identified in gray all the fields that are being basically taken out of the, the header. So first, the version is going to stay the same. It's important to show the version first. That is the first field. Uh, it's version 4 or version 6. IHL is the header length. Again, IP version 6 has a fixed header length of 40 bytes. So there's no need to have a field that says the header length. In IP version 4, that was an essential field. Because if you had optional fields down below, to the header length basically was there to define where the header stopped and the payload started. Type of service is basically the same as traffic class, so this field is about the same. The total length of the packet is about the same as the payload length. The difference being that the total length of an IP version 4 packet is the entire length of the packet including the header. The payload length in an IP version 6 is only the length of the payload excluding the header because the header is a fixed 40 bytes again so you don't need to include the header in that. Identification flags and fragment offset are basically functions that IP version 6 does not need to support. So in IP version 4 if a router receives a packet that is too big to process it has the option of breaking that packet in half attaching a new header to both halves and forwarding the packet on to the destination. Now that slows down the router considerably because these are functions that routers are not really built to do. That requires a lot of processing horsepower that routers aren't, aren't made with. So in IP version 6, if the router receives a packet that is too big to process, it just throws it out and it sends a message back to the sender, hey, this packet was too big. You're going to have to resend it in a smaller packet, and then the source will resend the same, okay, the same data in a smaller packet size. So it puts the burden back to the source and instead of on the router. We're able to strip out those three fields from the IP version 6 header. Uh, time to live and hop limit both basically are the same function. It's the number of routers that number of routers that a packet can visit before it expires. Okay, A packet will expire because we don't want packets bouncing around indefinitely around the internet and using up bandwidth um, that may be either lost or stuck in an infinite loop. Okay, So after uh, 128 hops, those packets will just be discarded when this uh, cycles down to zero. Protocol in IPv4 defines whether it's a UDP or TCP uh, protocol, the, the data packet. And this is basically the same as IP version 6, except that IP version 6 calls it next header. And as a default, that's going to define what type of data is in the packet. But it, instead, it may also just point to the, um, I mentioned that we have optional fields in IP version 6 in the payload, in the top of the payload, the next header may also point to an optional field to define that. So if there are optional fields, there will be a note in the next header. Header checksum is basically an error detection. If there's an error in transmission, if bits were lost in transmission of the packet header. Uh, and this field basically has been eliminated in IP version 6 because this function can be achieved in other layers of the OSI model. Now the source address 
is only 32 bits in IP version 4, and it's 128 bits. It's four times longer in IP version 6. If you look, however, in IP version 6, above the source address, there are only two rows of stuff. Two rows of stuff. That's, that's only eight bytes of data on the header besides the source and destination address. So the header is definitely streamlined. The source address is four times longer. The destination address is four times longer. It's 128 bits in IP version 6. And there are no options in padding. Like I said, those have been put into the payload section, which will be pointed to by the next header in IP version 6 if there are options. Okay? So that, that kind of shows you, again, in gray, you can see which, which fields have been deleted in the IP version 6 header. And IP version 6, by the way, also has a, an additional field called the flow label, which is for sequencing packets if they need to be resequenced and reassembled. Now, uh, just to summarize what fields have been deleted, fragmentation fields have all been stripped out of the standard header. The options have been moved out of the header and into the payload. The header checksum has been eliminated. Uh, the header length field has been eliminated, which is now fixed at 40 bytes. And the length field exclude, excludes IP version 6 header. So some revised fields. Time to live is now hop limit. Very similar, but uh, slightly different. The protocol is now called the next header. Again, similar function, um, slightly different definition. Type of service and traffic class are very similar. Address size increased from 32 bits to 128 bits. That's the, both source and destination addresses. The new flow label has been added also to the IP version 6 packet header. Now, some other new functions in IP version 6 is this anycast function. IP version 4 did not support anycast. Um, it turns out a lot of mobile devices need to connect to Wi-Fi, and they don't really care which one they connect to. So they send out a basically a sort of a broadcast to get a reply from any router, any uh, wire, wireless router that they can connect to. So they have what's called an anycast to do that. And then IP version 4 supports a broadcast, which is basically replaced in IP version 6 by expanded use of a multicast. So a multicast can is sort of a quasi broadcast. It broadcasts out to a lot of destinations on the, on the network without uh, attacking every host on the network. So it's supposed to be more efficient and less network contention that way. Now some other new features. Stateless auto configuration. A host in IP version 6 can connect to the network and assign itself its own IP address, basically, using its MAC address. So it uses its MAC address and the server's host address to configure its own IP address and connect to the, to the server automatically. No need for DHCP. It also supports new security protocols. When IP version 4 came out, there really was no security. They later came out with IPSEC, um, which was optional, optional security features. Now IP is required. IP security is required in IP version 6. And uh, two key areas where IP, IP security is, uh, is implemented, authentication of source. So in IP version 4, there's essentially no way to verify where a packet was coming from. If it said it was coming from a certain server, you had to assume that it was true. Now you can actually authenticate the source of the transmission. And encryption of the payload for security of the data while it's in uh, transit. Another key feature of IP version 6 is the limit of the packet size. So as a default, both version 4 and version 6 limit the packet size to 64 KB. But IP version 6 supports a new jumbo payload option it's called a, a jumbo datagram that can be as large as four gigabytes. So if you want to transmit a super large up to four gigabyte file using IP version 6, you can do that using this jumbo payload option. Um, now since IP version 4 and IP version 6 are going to coexist, and IP6 is not backward compatible with IP version 4, they're basically two separate 
independent, completely parallel networks operating in tandem. And it's going to continue like that for quite a while, a number of years to come. Because the transition from IP version 4 to IP version 6 has been very slow. And it's, it's very likely that uh, IP version 4 is not going to go away in the next decade. So, so they're going to coexist. And there, there is a, a means of transferring traffic between the two networks using gateways, translator gateways, using a network address translation. And in summary, I want to give a quote from John Chambers, the CEO of Cisco. If we don't overcome the challenges of IP version 4, we will slow down the growth of the Internet and lose momentum as an industry. IP version 6 is important to all of us to everyone around the world. It is crucial to our ability to tie together everyone and every device. So that kind of summarizes the, the driving force behind the transition to IP version 6. I'm Joe James and I thank you for listening.